Hi, this is Carrie once again with yet another video on how to use DaVinci Resolve 15. This is one a number of you have asked for, so here it is. It's how to do green screen compositing. Now, this is going to work the same in basically 12.5, 14, and 15. It's all about the same, although the tools have got better and better and better. Uh, and now with 15, it's even uh, easier to use. It's more accurate, and I really like it. So stay tuned, and we will be right back with how to do green screening in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so here is a pretty bad green screen. It's not well lit. You can see the shadows in the background. This is going to make for what would normally be a pretty poor cutout. And we're going to see how good we can do this in DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to do it on the color page. So I'm going to bounce over to the color page. Now, if you haven't used nodes before, we're going to use nodes now. <laughs> That's all there is to it. We're, you're going to have to use a number of different nodes, but you'll see how nodes work, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to actually turn off uh, the timeline or, and um, LUTs. And, well, actually, let's get the LUTs back on here for just a second, because one thing I want to do is do some color correction right off the bat. So I'm not going to do anything but in, um, use the Gnome Kroll Cinede because this was done on a Panasonic GH4 in Cinelike, um, so it's a pretty good LUT to use. And now we've got some more color on this green, but we certainly have a ways to go. Now, one thing that we need to do in our setup over here is we have our video of the green screen on top of our background. If it's the other way around, it's not going to work. So. Whatever is going to be the background needs to be on the bottom. Whatever is going to be in the foreground needs to be on top. Just like the titles or anything else. As you stack them, those are the things that are on top. So make sure you have that set up first. We're going to go back to our color tab. So I'm going to start off by creating a new node by hitting Option S. So now anything I do in here isn't going to affect the node before it, but it may affect the nodes after it. So uh, we kind of see where we're going with that. Now, I'm going to come over here to my power window, and I'm just going to create a curve. And I'm just going to draw in here. Now, I, I should watch the video and crop it as close as I can to uh, the talent right there and figure out you know how best to do it but this is just going to be a quick and dirty way of doing it and wait it doesn't seem like anything happened although if we look at the node we have everywhere that we didn't want is gray and what or what we want is gray and what we don't want is showing so we're going to come over down here to that curve that i drew and just kind of reverse it well again nothing really happened right well that's because we have to tell Resolve that we're going to be using transparency. So over here in the node window, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to add alpha output. That creates this little blue dot down here and the alpha channel will go over to the alpha output and we have background showing. Okay, we're on our way. Back to the power windows to create another curve and I'm just going to do the same thing over here going to block out the stuff that I don't want. Now, you see, it didn't just kind of work right. So we have to go in here and manipulate these controls and make sure that we have stuff dialed in properly. There we go. Uh, I had my <laughs> layers confused there. All right, so now we've got the edges cropped. It's time to do the green screening. Now for that, I'm going to go over to the qualifier tool. And there's a couple different ways that I can do this. I can start selecting in here and try and get all the different colors. 
and eventually I may be able to get that to work well a different way that I prefer. And actually, let's go ahead and create a new node for this. Okay, and I hit Option S to create a new tab, and I'm gonna pipe the transparency through over here and the transparency back to the alpha node. All right. Okay, I've got my nodes all back together. I've got the alpha going from where we chopped the sides off into this new node where we're gonna do our keying and then out to the alpha node. But things seem to have got a little weird and we seem to have kind of lost uh, some stuff. So we're just gonna go in and fix that real quick. All right, now we're back to our key. Now, we can, there's two different ways of doing this. One is to use the HSL hue saturation luminance to create the mask by clicking around, trying to get the different colors. That would work fantastic if this was a really well lit background. Um, you'd have a pretty much a single color, it'd be a lot easier to deal with because this has a lot of shading and different colors and textures and shadows. That's gonna be a little difficult to use. So instead we're gonna use the 3D qualifier. So I'm gonna select 3D and I'm just gonna draw lines in the stuff that's green that I want to get rid of. And I'll come over here and we'll go over here. All right, well, it's exactly opposite of what we want, right? So over here by the selection range, we have the inverse key. All right, now we're making some progress here, but we got a little cleanup to do. So let's zoom in here and we can see we got we have a couple little problems here. Number one, uh, this area down here, I'm just gonna draw a little line in there. Oops, got a little too much of it. All right, and we gotta clean up these edges. The worst thing about doing a green screen is when you can see that it's obviously cut. So a couple different options we have here. First, we have this despill. So that's gonna do a pretty good job. That's gonna knock a lot of that out to the point where we need to kind of zoom in some more to see what's going on. I'm just tired of that image on the screen. So we'll find a better frame and make sure I can get those ears so we can see what's going on there. Now we have our different matte finessing that we can do. So you see there's a lot of this little noise around there. So we can slide that up and kind of kill some of that noise. Sometimes that's the right tool, sometimes it's not. We have to play around with that a little bit. Clean black. Again, if you don't know what they're doing, just play around with the tools and try and make it look as good as you can. Clean white, same thing. Up oh, doesn't really seem to do much on this one, so move on. Reset it if you need to. The blur radius, you can see, is going to affect how much of a blur is between the foreground and background there. I don't want too much, otherwise it starts cutting off the head. And then the in and out ratio. So this will pull things in or push them out and you'll kind of get a shadow. But if I pull it in to the left, I can really start cleaning up that image. Now let's go ahead and fit that back. I'm gonna turn off the tools and that looks pretty darn good. So that's the basics of doing green screening with DaVinci Resolve 15. Again, a lot of this stuff is very similar in even going back to 12.5 or 14, but in 15 we have some new tools that make it a lot easier, make it cleaner, and it's faster and it's more accurate. So if you're gonna do green screening with 15, this is the way to do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and like this video and share it with your friends or, or buddies who want to see more about DaVinci Resolve 15. Be sure and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check the bell icon so that you can get notified every time we put out a new video like this. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.